Hello everyone, today I want to share my Kanish build and teams with you in the short guide. As always, I start with the build, then go over teams, and at the end, show some of this gameplay. For the Lord of the Night! Teamwork is dreamwork! Like I got him corner. Kinichi's build is nothing out of the ordinary, with the usual attack, in his case a dendro damage bonus and crit crit damage, of course this looks a little bit unbalanced, and it is for now, but once you get the obsidian codex set, you obviously get 40% crit rate for free, so this is a pretty optimal like distribution to aim for in the long run. As for energy recharge, I think his burst skill does quite nice consistent damage, so it's definitely worth to invest into it. I think I overshot a little bit, but between 160 and 180% is definitely a good place to be at. As for elemental mastery, I think going for spread damage with quicken is definitely viable on him, so investing like 200-300 elemental mastery into his build is definitely pretty good for that. But if you're going back and forth between Burgeon and Burning and Quicken and you are too lazy to switch builds, then you better just ignore it like I did. It's doing pretty much nothing in those other teams. As for talent, same story as Mualani, this character is mainly designed around the elemental skill, so definitely focus on leveling this up first. Then again, the bear skill, very good damage, definitely level it up as well. Of course, Mualani does it instantly, and this is more like damage over time, so a little bit different. But again, the normal attacks don't do anything, so you can safely ignore those. As for constellations, again, they feel very similar to Mualani, especially constellation 4 seems to be just copy-pasted, with extra damage for the elemental burst skill and extra energy generation, which means he can get away with less energy recharge once you get this. And then 1, 2, and 6 are just extra damage for the elemental skill, and especially his cannon has a low area of effect, and once you get constellation 6, it kind of um, addresses that with bouncing damage between multiple targets. And then constellation 2 is also worth highlighting because it grants you dendro resistance shred after you hit someone with the cannon for 6 seconds, which means you don't have to rely on characters like Zhongli or the Deepwood memory set for this. And this character also has some very nice free to play, like accessible 4 star options, with this Melazine sword with close to 50% attack and very nice base attack to scale it, and some extra energy recharge, why not? And then the Earth Shaker, you get it for the free web event, but you also can craft it, so eventually you will get high refinements on this, which is very nice for this character specifically with the elemental skill damage. And I think the stat line is the exact same as the prototype Akag, so it's just a straight up better version of it. As for artifacts, we already covered subsets earlier. As for main stats, if you want to dabble into like quicken teams, you can definitely try Elemental Mastery main stat here, but for simplicity's sake, or just to be on the safe side, I would just recommend attack percentage. Then for the cap, definitely dendro damage bonus, and the last slot, crit or crit damage, but I think it's safe to assume that crit damage will lead to a better ratio once you get the Obsidian Codex set for the extra 40% crit rate for free. And then, until you get there, like me, I would just go for bonus stats like attack or elemental skill damage or dendro damage, whichever you can get with good substats. As for team compositions, I think Kenichi is kind of in the same boat as Ayato, where both are designed to be played on field, dealing damage with their elemental skill as like a main DPS or a filler and a quick swap team. On top of that, of course, Kenichi also has a lot of synergy with like Burning or Burgeon, which grants extra Night Soul points, and which essentially means he can get one extra shot off with his cannon each rotation with his elemental skill. Which in turn also means his burst skill doesn't benefit from burning or burgeon at all, which makes Quicken actually kind of viable on top of that. Because you get a lot of extra damage from the burst skill, but also the shots from the cannon with the elemental skill do more damage, which means it kind of averages out with the extra shot you get from burning or burgeon in terms of overall damage. So I think both are viable and kind of equal, but if you have like a burgeon team with like a dedicated burgeon, like high element and mastery character like Toma, it should pull ahead a little bit, so this is probably the best thing he can offer. But 
To draw it back to the parallel with Ayato, both also have very good um, sustained damage on their Berserkers even while they are off field, which makes them even kind of viable as a sub DPS with like a high energy recharge build on an emblem set, for example. But it's obviously kind of desperate measures. If you're missing like a character like Nahida, for example, you're kind of getting, um, you're kind of out of options kind of early in terms of Dendro sub DPS characters. So you can make him viable as like. Like a dendro sub dps if you want to play your raiden sara team for example to do like big quicken damage then you can play something like this i just wanted to mention it once but focusing now on the main place uh, with burning and Bergeon as a main dps and to trigger burning we obviously need a pyro character in our team who does off-field pyro application quite well like jungling is perfect otherwise dia can get the job done or toma especially if we play Bergeon and uh, play him on a high element of mastery build but if we play burning we can obviously also trigger melt off of it so a character like rosaria is really good here and both of these birth skills of these two characters snapshot so we get a lot of value from a character like bennett in this team i like this a lot it's only foster character super accessible team uh, one downside is rosaria has obviously a kind of a small range on her bear skill and can you moves around a lot so it can happen that you kind of lure the enemies outside of rosaria's bear skill which is a little bit unfortunate from time to time and this is a team that caught me a little bit off guard because with Kinich and Baiju we have so much gender application and gender resonance and together with Xiangling we can keep up burning against a character like Furina so she will trigger Vaporize on this team instead of Bloom which is like a like burn vape team I guess which is something that I had didn't have on my radar until now so quite potent especially if we have Baiju in our team and Farina we generate a lot of fanfare points and can ramp up her damage buff quite nice which these two characters benefit a lot from. And moving on to actual Bergeon, again a very nice team, very accessible with only 4 star characters. I think by now everybody knows that Toma is the premier character to trigger Bergeon while also sustaining your teams with his shields. Then Jingxiu, of course everybody knows by now that he is perfect to have high Hydra application in your team while off field to trigger like a million Dendro pods. And then Sucrose to round it out for the extra elemental mastery for Toma to do more damage with the Bergeon. And then if you want to, you can obviously also change this up again with uh, five star characters like Farina and Citrin. Uh, we already know what uh, Farina does. Citrin, of course, also buffs the elemental skill damage in your team. Perfect for Farina on top of the Hydro Resonance. And then Kenich also gets extra damage on his cannon shots from Citrin. And now for the showcase, quite easy. Kenich's burst skill prolongs the duration of his elemental skill, but it's only by, like I think, less than two seconds, which essentially means it makes up for the animation time it takes to cast it. So you can just press it before and it doesn't matter at all. And then once you press the elemental skill, you just t get tethered to the enemy and then you just do loop shots around them with their normal attacks and you get to move into blind spots to create extra night soul points to charge his night soul meter. Once it's full, you can press the elemental skill to do his cannon shot. That's basically it. And you can even dodge while tethered to the enemy, so don't uh, worry about that, I guess. So let me just quickly showcase this. Unfortunately, of course, I don't have anything here that has his burst skill ready, so... Yes, I just do this for extra damage, press the burst skill first, again, it doesn't matter if you do it during it, because you get the time refunded again. Then you press it once it's full, and again, and that's about it. And even on top of his head you get a little timer which indicates one hit, once his elemental scale is about to run out so you can kind of um, time it if you if you feel like you won't get another cannon shot off you can even like switch off him and for now i'm gonna leave you with a summer abyss gameplay but before that really quickly for this character more so for than for anyone else definitely play the trial first make sure that you like playing this character before you pull for him if you haven't made that decision yet <laughs> Because he can be very hit or miss in terms of gameplay. Being tethered to an enemy can feel very restrictive and especially if you're in the open world and there's a ledge or something, he can get stuck easily. Again, make sure that you like playing this character before you pull for him. He is like very unique. I got him cornered! Oh. 
Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful and gave you some inspiration for your own builds. If so, stay tuned for more videos. Until then, have fun and bye bye!